How is everybody doing today? My name's Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. We have got a really fun episode planned today, and this is actually a topic I go back and forth with my buddies about a lot. What are the top five whiskeys you should always have stocked in your bar at all times? It's a really good question. You know, and I get this question a lot too, like, hey, what's a good go-to whiskey for me to have? Just a solid whiskey in general. Um, so I figured let's do an episode about this. You know, I've seen a lot of episodes recently about top available bourbons, available whiskeys. This is going to be um, included, you know, so there are going to be a couple rules for the episode today. So I can't repeat distilleries, first of all. So I'm going to choose one expression from each distillery, if you will. Um, we can't do multiples from distillery, just to give love to everyone and um, more variety on the bar as well. Rule number two, it has to be available in virtually every part of the United States. I can't speak to stocks, you know, in other countries and things like that, but in the United States, it has to be available pretty much everywhere. And rule number three is it has to have a good value to whiskey ratio. You know, that's at least my own personal rule, my opinion, um, that it has a good value to whiskey ratio. That's going to be subjective, of course, depending on the person, but this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, this is not going to be just budget bourbons. This is going to be things that may be a little bit pricier, but again, it's going to be attainable, it's going to be findable, and it's going to be um, good value for what you're getting. So if you do want to see a budgets episode, I did do a whole um, multiple flights of budget whiskeys. You can go check that out if you want. But let's get right into number five, top whiskeys you need in your bar right now. Coming in at number five on my list of whiskeys you need to have stocked, Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. Now this may surprise people, but this whiskey has really connected with me, at least recently, and it's because of some of the finishing, if you will, that they do on this bottle. So this isn't just normal Woodford. You know, normal Woodford, it's the same proof, actually, 90.4 proof. But what they do is once this whiskey has aged, now there isn't an age statement, so we don't know the age, but once it comes to full maturation, they actually take that whiskey out of the barrel, they put it into a new unused barrel that's been heavily toasted and lightly charred. So you gotta think it's gonna give a lot more of those kind of barrel char toasted notes, and it really comes through. Um, you know, I've tried multiple bottles. This is a store pick. I've tried just the regular shelf bottle as well, and I thought it was great. If you ever wanna introduce someone to a whiskey that's just dessert in a glass, it's gonna be this. It's just chocolate, banana, vanilla ice cream, vanilla pudding. It's really, really good. Um, I've been on a big, you know, toasted finishing, toasted barrel kick lately, I guess, if you will. I mean, with the 1910, this, a couple of Michter's toasted barrel finishes they've done have been great. So I think that's one of the reasons this has been on my mind lately, and I really, really enjoy it. The reason this comes in at number five and not higher is because of the price. Um, it is about $50. Store picks can get up to 55 for me. So not the highest value to whiskey ratio on our list today, but an excellent offering out of Brown Foreman, excellent offering out of Woodford Reserve. And if you get this bottle, you will not be disappointed. Moving on to number four on our list, and we are moving into a new distillery. This is coming out of Heaven Hill Distillery. One of my favorite expressions out of Heaven Hill. Pikesville Rye. Um, this is a rye whiskey, as mentioned, so 51% rye. Value to whiskey ratio on this bottle is excellent. This is about $40. Um, some places it's even cheaper than that. And it's just a classic, classic rye. It's delicious. 110 proof, seven years. Specs on that, you just can't beat it $40. You really can't. Um, the mouthfeel, the mouth coating, the rye notes, and the sweetness balance on this bottle is fantastic. Heaven Hill has a lot of offerings and a lot I wanted to include on this list, but to me, we need to have a we need to have a rye in our bar. You know, we have to. And there are cheaper ryes out there, but I like a rye that I can use in cocktails. I like a rye that I can just drink neat if I want to. And this has the proof point, the flavor profile to do both. Very versatile rye, affordable. Um, you know, it, obviously this is going to be not not bottom shelf, not budget necessarily, but pretty close, you know, $40 bottle, not terrible. So this is a rye you should always keep stocked. Pikesville's always in my bar. Um, honorable mention Old Forester rye as well, if you're looking for a budget bottle, fantastic rye as well. But you will not be disappointed once again with this rye.
Moving right on to number three of our top available whiskeys you have to have stocked. This is a product coming out of Jim Beam Distillery. Which one's it gonna be? Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve. Um, and I'm talking store pick or just the regular one off the shelf. They're both really good. Now this is the new labeling. I do have um, some old labels here, but this standard is nine years. On its own, nine years. Um, some of the picks can get up to 15 years, store picks that I have, I have heard. Um, I've never tried a 15, I've had a couple 14s and um, several nine year picks. And you can tell a difference, you know, the 14 years that I have had were you know, pretty, pretty much a lot better than the, the nine year picks, but even the nine year picks, the bottle you're gonna get off the shelf is fantastic. 120 proof, only $39.99 in a lot of states. Michigan, this can get up to 50, 52 if you're getting a store pick, especially a store pick people know about. But um, even at $50, that $50 price point, this is a, but a bourbon that's worth the money. You know, the, the Jim Beam Knob Creek notes come through. You know, Jim Beam has layers of what I described as like that nuttiness note. There's the Jim Beam White Label, Knob Creek, Booker's, they're all different types of nuttiness. And this, you know, Knob Creek nuttiness comes through. But because of the proof, it doesn't punch in the face like some of the nuttiness you'll get in other Jim Beam products. A very well balanced 120 proof bourbon. That's what I love the most, you know, 120 proof, I keep saying it, but it is, it's wonderful. Um, excellent balance of the oak with the nine years coming through. Just the sweetness, brown sugar, baking spices with the nuttiness, you know, with that nuttiness does come through, but a great product. You know, Knob Creek entry level, budget option. It actually won my, my budget bourbon's blind flight we did, but you want to move on up something something you want you want to get punched in the face a little bit this is going to be the whiskey for you all right before we move on to number two i just want to jump in here real quick and tell you about an episode that's going to be upcoming so after this episode's been out for a week or two i am going to be doing a blind flight with all five of my top available whiskeys um, that you need to have stocked i think that's going to be a lot of fun so i'm going to do it as another episode we'll probably do something similar in a live stream as well so keep an eye out for that coming up soon um, if it's out by now, I'll put the link in the um, in the upper right corner here for you guys so you can go watch it. But doing these all side by side, we'll find out which one is truly my favorite. These are just my preliminary rankings. Once we get blind, do them side by side, we'll find out for sure. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Let's get back into the list. Moving on to our top two whiskeys, these two go neck and neck for me. It's so hard for me to choose one over the other. It depends on what I'm in the mood for, what I want to drink. We're going to be moving on to Wild Turkey Distillery. What's it going to be? There's a couple options for Wild Turkey. Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Oh, man, this was such a tough decision for me. Between Russell's Reserve Single Barrel Picks and Wild Turkey Rare Breed, I, I had to go with the Rare Breed just because of availability. That's the big thing. You know, price is also a little bit cheaper as well. One of my favorite offerings from Wild Turkey, in bourbon in general, I would say. You know, this is a blend of six, eight, and 12 year old whiskeys. It, um, it, it really is classic Wild Turkey profile. You know, you get that Wild Turkey nuttiness, a little bit of that sour sweetness is how I describe it too. Nice citrus notes, the oak comes through on this bottle for sure. Um, it's a little bit more oak balanced, I would say, compared to some of the Russell's picks I've had. You know, fantastic, fantastic product. Only $35 to $40 in a lot of parts of the country. Like, that, that is unheard of. Um, I thought this was more expensive until I did my uh, Top Whiskeys of 2019 episode, and a lot of people were like, no, I can get this sub 40. I was like, oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. So value to whiskey ratio, incredible. Um, proof will vary depending on the batch you get. Bottle I have is 116.8. This is something, like, especially if you like the 101, you know, especially if you like the 101, which most of us, a lot of us do, this just amplifies those delicious notes to another level. Something I always reach for, if I don't know what I want to pour at the end of the night, this is the one I really reach for the most, I would say, because I know what I'm going to get every time. It's going to be consistent, it's going to be delicious, and you can find it. You can find it as the best part. All right, moving on to number one. Um, this might not be surprising to a lot of people. Another Brown Foreman product coming out of Old Forester Distillery, 1920. Just the most balanced, most classic bourbon you can imagine. 
You know, it really is. I, I love everything about this. I love everything Old Forester does in general. I can't find a bad product of theirs yet. But the 1920 just gives me everything I want in a bourbon. It's like a cherry chocolate, you know, like a chocolate covered cherry, but it's the inside of that chocolate covered cherry. Imagine that. Like that little creamy filling, that creamy center. When you bite into a chocolate covered cherry, that's like this bottle. You know, no age statement on this, coming in at 115 proof. About $60 for me, but that puts this in the same category with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Stag Jr. Um, I don't have any problem with that. Like it holds, it holds up to those in my opinion. I, you know, I, some of those other expressions I may take over this, but they're not always available. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Stag Jr. most definitely aren't available. Um, this you can find everywhere, which is crazy. And again, some places it's about $50. Value to whiskey ratio, incredible on this bottle. Flavor profile, it's just, if, if you're used to whiskey now at this point, you know, you, you've experimented into whiskey a little bit, into bourbon specifically, it's time to move to some higher proof stuff you're thinking, this is the bottle you want. It gives you that nice proof, nice co mouth coating, nice Kentucky hug going down because of the proof, and it's just so easy. It's still so easy to drink, still so wonderful. Um, that's why it had to come number one. That is why it had to come number one. You may have noticed no Buffalo Trace products made the list. That's because I don't know of a single Buffalo Trace product that's actually available everywhere. Um, you know, a lot are available here that other places in the country can't get. Eagle Rare, Buffalo Trace, even Benchmark now is on allocation. So that is why none of those made the list. Uh, if, if, you know, if allocation and distribution was better on those products, a lot of them could have made the list. Uh, Buffalo Trace does an excellent job on whiskey. They absolutely do. But because of those reasons, I can't, I couldn't put it on the list. All right, guys, well, that was my top five list of available whiskeys you should always have on your bar. Now, this is just my opinions. As mentioned, you know, I set parameters for myself, only one from each distillery. We couldn't double up. And there's a lot of multiple expressions from multiple distilleries that I love. So this is all subjective, just my opinions. But I want to hear from you guys. What is your go-to? You know, what would you recommend as the available whiskey you can find that you'd recommend to other people? I didn't mention during the Woodford, like this is probably one of the introductory whiskeys. If I have someone who's new to whiskey, new to bourbon, and they want to try something that's easy, this is it. Like it's extra creamy vanilla desserty. So that that's one of the reasons this was included, you know? Because whiskey's all about sharing. It is. You can see the top five here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be doing a follow-up episode of this where we're gonna be doing a blind tasting of all five of these, and I'm gonna find out what which one is truly my favorite, because you never know until you do it blind. I want to mention one other thing real quick. I am thinking about changing my live stream schedule. So Fridays aren't working out too well with every other week not being able to stream. I want to be more consistent in 2020. So I'm thinking about doing Wednesday nights before Jason at the Mash and Drum. So it'd be 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you guys, if that schedule works for you, let me know um, down in the comments if you'd be okay seeing Wednesday nights instead of Fridays. I think that's going to work out better for me, but we'll, uh, we'll play it by ear and we'll see. I also just want to give a quick thank you to all my new patrons. We've got a couple new patrons recently. Patrick Fulmer, Mike, and Sammy Santarita. Thank you all for joining the Bourbon Sane family. If you guys are interested in joining, uh, you can join for as little as $3 a month. A lot of cool benefits, perks, great community over there. And we have a lot of fun on Patreon. Thank you all so much for being here today. Let me know which of these is your favorite expression. If you disagree with this list, that's fine. What are the available whiskeys that you would put in your list that you'd always keep on your bar? I want to hear that from you all. I appreciate y'all being here. I will see you very soon for the blind tasting. Stay insane, everyone.